Um, so let's start our meeting. It's 7, 11 p.m. And I'm just gonna read all our virtual meeting info paragraph. So um, call meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law GLC 30A18 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Hubberson Board of Library Trustees will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via Zoom. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website a comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. We see you, Tom. Ah, uh, lucky you. <laughs> I like seeing everyone, it's nice. So um, yeah, so my, I sent an agenda. It's a little bit much, I think, when I was looking back at it tonight. So let's see how far we can go in an hour. What do you think? Okay, so um, I know Chris, you sent out the library director's report. Um, will you go over it for us? I didn't get the chance to read it. I was doing that crazy Google meet, trying to do the Google Quabbin meeting. Sure, don't worry about it. I, uh, I just bring it out because it's I think it's easier for you guys to see what I wrote, um, but I don't mind reading it. Um, so the director's report, December 3rd, 2020, we had 18 people for curbside pickup. We had 88 patrons. Uh, our Facebook totals were, we dropped to 87 page views in November. We had 88 last month, uh, but our posts, ex really uh, exploded. We had 446 um, reach in uh, November, but we only had 199 in October. So I'm hoping that that will continue to, to grow. Um, our page likes increased by two from 632 to 634. Um, I added this one because I hadn't realized that it was a difference uh, for us, but page followers um, in November was 691 which is more people than like the page. So that's a positive. Uh, I didn't have October numbers, but I should, I'll continue to update this with the previous months in the subsequent reports that I have. And our Wi-Fi connection was 35. <clears throat> we did have a very slow month. Um, the Senior Book Club was up and running. We met Wednesday, December 2nd and talked about Educated by Tara Westover. In January, we'll discuss the Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Um, the library celebrated the Transgender Awareness Week from November 15th to November 21st with a display of books from our collection. Um, our collection of winter holiday, holiday items will be on display by Monday and Gabby will decorate our library with a holiday theme. She loves doing that. Um, I'm still waiting on a call back from Royal Steam um, if I don't hear from them in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to see if there's another company that I can bring in to, to work on the, uh, check out our, uh, our steam traps. Um, let's see. I will be preparing the FY21 budget for submission to the town administrator. That's due this month. And the update for the strategic plan, which we talked about last month, is due this month. So um, I'm taking care of that. That will be addressed before our next meeting. And the November budget numbers are not out yet. So um, I will update those when they become available. So the numbers that are on this report are from last month. And that is it for my report. Ex actually, I take it back. I should add this to this one. Um, we're now a green town, uh, according to COVID numbers. And uh, Ryan asked me to start contact tracing which I don't think I can do because of the privacy concerns for my library patrons. Um, but I do have an email into MBLC on that to get further uh, direction. But the last information that I had from the ALA and the MBLC is that uh, we should not be doing contact tracing at the library to protect the privacy of our patrons. Okay, that's it. That was can awesome, I, thank you. 
I'm sorry, can I just ask, um, at, you said something went way up um, at the beginning of your report. Was oh, that... yes. Uh, there is a, a, in Facebook, there is your insights. And on our Harbertson Public Library insights page, there is a, how many people did our posts reach in the past month? Uh, last month in October, it was 199. Uh, in November, that went up to 446. So. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Krista, do you have the director's report yeah. there? Yeah, okay. I have it. I was yeah. pasting it in, so oh, okay. I, I okay. missed that. So I want to make sure you're not retyping everything, yeah. or rewriting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then um, I should know this, but is is green? I thought red was bad. I thought green was good for the. Uh, the best one is gray. That oh. means that you're, you know, everything's really low. Okay. Uh, green is showing that we are having an increase, but it's not such a high increase that we would go into the red zone. So green is 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 like a caught. It should really be amber to be cautionary if you're going to go with the traffic lights, but they pick green for this, so so be it. Okay. But like this, like the state doesn't require. The contract tra tracing he's just asking if we can help with that or something and you're checking on the policies the mblc policies yeah the M i'm checking with the mblc pol mblc policies because i don't know what i don't think that the state actually gave any sort of uh any sort of consideration to the libraries when they mm -hmm. first came up with their whole idea um so i'm I don't want to be the uh, the bellwether, you know. I don't want to be the barometer that says, you know. I don't want to be that first one that says, yeah, I'm doing it because okay. I'm, I'm not comfortable with that unless okay. I get more clear direction. Okay, thank you. I can say we're doing contact tracing at Fitchburg State. So anytime a person comes into the library, they have to swipe in and they have to swipe out. Um, so just so we know who's in the building, in case we do need to reach out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of easier so, with academic libraries, I think, because you can require. I agree. I mean, I, I just wanted to share that, like, yeah, okay. Like, at least oh. some academic libraries are doing contact tracing, and they're not sharing <clears throat> personal data. Uh, they're just absolutely not. We just swipe in. We just know who came into the building at a certain time and what time they left, and so we don't know what they checked out. We don't know anything what they did while they're in the building. We just know that they were in the library at a certain time. I thought the only privacy concern was the. Um, the materials or whatever they might have done inside the library, not the fact that they entered the building. There's all kinds of library type security cameras and whatnot. And your presence was understood or known. Okay. Chris, did you well, Chris is going to talk to the library people. So. Yeah. 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 Hi, Morgan. So I just shared a link about yeah. the MBLC and contact tracing, but I think it's dated, I believe from June, and I don't know if there are any updates. Um, there's a July, oh, at the bottom, there's a July 7th update. Um, and the update for July says that libraries should include a mandatory safety, safe, safety log of workers and patrons to support contact tracing. Um, so that's as of July 7th. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think it's just the personal data that doesn't get shared, like, you know, the person's name. And I, I think if someone could get <laughs> positive, I don't. That's fine. I, I I did not see that one. I was looking at MBLC and I must not have seen that page. Um, but uh, if they're contact tracing, then I will start contact tracing. Yeah. I know that um, Forbush just announced that they are doing curbside, but only by appointment now, whereas previously you could show up, call that you're there, pick up your materials. Now it's, you have to sign up. And I think it's through Flocknote or Event, um, but they have a, a traceable method that way. And Gardner actually just shut down yesterday, Wednesday, I believe for deep clean. Um, but I don't think okay. they've been open to patrons yet. Is four bush folding? Okay. Westminster. Um, Westminster. No, that's Westminster. Oh, oh that's right. That's right. 
Yeah, well, I mean, Chris, I think continue to do what MBLC recommends, but also what you're comfortable with. And let's just keep communicating when we need to. And I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave the contact tracing out for anybody. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments or anything anyone want to bring up in that regard? Good job, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. That's not fun doing that stuff. Well, well, wait, you, they weren't asking you to do the contact tracing, right? They were just asking you to have information about who was using the library. Yeah, I would have to take everybody's name and phone number down uh, as they come in. Okay. Um, I don't think I have to do it for curbside pickup people because mm. um, they're not coming into the building. Okay. Thanks. So did everyone get a minute to read over the um, fabulous minutes that Krista created from our last meeting, the no November 5th meeting? Okay, so there were some changes. I think there was an email today. I haven't, haven't looked at that, but I will go back and make that update. Um, so with, um, does anyone have an update there in front of them just to kind of read it clearly? I have the updated and um, correct me if I'm wrong. It was just the yeah. um, uh, director's report. Oh, yeah. The important we're not exceeding something instead of we are exceeding. Oh, something. okay, Thanks okay. For catching okay. that, Chris. Yeah, and the only other addition I did was I added Jane Arado's full name. Was that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So let's make a motion minute. to accept the minutes from the November fifth, twenty twenty meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. I will second. Okay. All in favor, Krista? Aye. Um, Tom? Aye. Morgan? Aye. Connie? Aye. Um, and this is Josephine Amato, not Ryan McLean. Aye. Yes. Okay, motions, um, um, minutes accepted. Just a comment, stepping back quickly. Uh, Chris, you were looking for an alternative boiler person uh, or company. Uh, Bankowski has been in to the building several times. I don't uh, know. Yeah, they, um, they have they been. Uh, Did they fall by the way? Uh, it's not, they don't handle steam, uh, okay. they handle forest hot water. Um, Bankowski is actually the one that recommended Royal Steam to me. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have the trust fund still on here. Is there any update or anything that we want to discuss in that regard? I don't have anything further to add to the last okay. report. Okay, so I'm going to swipe that off of there. Library foundation, oh, the perimeter report and the stuff that you've been doing, Tom. Real quick, the, uh, the uh, contract was let with um, Mike Johnson, a uh, young man from Johnson Structural Engineering. He came out, we walked around the building. We only had an hour, uh, but I think we're heading in the right direction. He gave us some direction, we're gonna do some things, and then he's gonna come out and take a second look. Um, just as kind of a comment, there, there was no luck getting down into the whatever is the sub basement, I, uh, I'd have to destructively remove some of the floor and go down there and I'm just not gonna do that. It uh, doesn't sound like it's worth it. Uh, it seems like, well, who knows, but um, we're gonna be able to do what he needs, I hope, through the highway department. They're gonna come out and perhaps uh, help us dig us some holes by hand so that we don't get any machinery in there that would be uh, just too much for the situation. And I think we'll be able to get that be before the ground freezes and the snow flops. Uh, if then I could interject, they've, they've done that. Oh. Pardon me? They've done that already. If you go by, there's already a hole near the uh, foundation. Okay, good. And the highway did that? Uh, I don't know who did it. I just happened to go in Tuesday evening and there was a hole with a 
with a, a cone there. Okay, great. I'll get with Ryan and see what we do next. There's a couple inside things we got to do. Okay. So, um, so Tom, what are the next steps? What's the next well, step? In, inside, he wanted us to take off some of the interior um, in the same area of the wall, the northeast corner there. He wanted us to take off some of the interior, uh, I guess it's sheetrock or some kind of sheathing so that he could see the actual brick to see if the inside was also in some way deteriorated. And then he'll come back out and inspect both the inside and the outside. On the southern half of the front wall, the southeast corner, uh, I'm just gonna string a wire across there to see that the wall is still straight. And I think it is, there's a very minor bow. And um, that's, I think, all we have to do on the south side. Okay, okay. so, um, okay, so we ha do we have all the money that we need for that? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, I guess you probably, I don't know if all of you got the email from Ryan about CPC um, grants, CP, CPA grants. Yes. So the, there's a, they have a meeting in January. So if we would want to request any funding, we would have to, it would be part of that January meeting. Is that the new topic for this meeting? Well, I don't know. That's why I guess I asked. That's why I ask if you know, we're thinking the money we have now is sufficient for the work that's being done now, and what the next step is and what we need for that, and if we, if we need to ask for more money. I think we're fully funded for the wall, mm -hmm. um, but what we might do is go back to the CPC and ask for some new and different money for new and different activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I had a recommendation to make, it would be the window sills and, and the bottom part of the windows that are uh, on the road side of the building um, are, you know, they're close to the ground and they get splashed and they're a little bit rotty. And uh, we might um, get an estimate on that and rebuild those windows to the extent necessary. They don't have to be completely rebuilt, I don't think, but um, they have to rebuild them, and I think they'd have to respect the historical aspect of the building. Yeah. So that would be one recommendation. I think we said last time we'd all come in with our our favorite list of how we might spend some more money. Yeah. So, okay. So, I guess um, it's important for us, if we do want any funding, to get into that January meeting. Um, so, um, yeah, Chris, you see, what do you see as the library needing like most urgently? Uh, well, we got to get the heat worked on and, uh, again, I'm waiting on Royal steam for that. Uh, probably a, uh, better or more power coming into the library which means like a whole electrical upgrade. Um, we currently have two uh, power boxes, one for downstairs and one for upstairs. And the one for upstairs is still using screw in fuses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe lights for the, uh, for the children's room, replacing the old fluorescent ones and putting that back, you know, fixing that up. And um, there's, uh, there's a couple areas where air is coming into the building through the walls that we, if we could plug those up, I bet it would be more comfortable. But I think that might be addressed by the green grant that Ryan is currently working on. If you'll recall the, uh, the electrical was a big deal. It was like $100,000 or something. Yep. And I, I thought we put that on our five-year plan yeah. for, a, for a, a future year. I forget which year it was, but Mm -hmm. a future year yeah. yeah my thinking was um because you know when we talked to ryan was it last month that ryan joined us or the month before that like us doing our best effort to try to also get some funding from other uh, you know other um 
for example, I'm holding in my hand and I'm afraid to share my screen with you, although I have this all up on my computer, I'm afraid I'll lose you and it won't go right. So I'm just gonna tell you and send you the link later. Um, so yeah, so I've just kind of been looking into grants and I, um, I feel that that falls into library foundation repair work, other work, and also the ADA compliance um, bullets on the agenda. So the MBLC has a preservation assessment grant. The deadline for the grant is January 14th, 2021. It's in stages, so there are a couple of deadlines, but it, it, it is to help um, or to address building issues, storage spaces, um, environmental conditions and controls. Um, so there's a whole list, um, shelving and object enclosures and you know, some, I, it, it would all apply to us, but we're, we're not talking about most of this. So there are a couple of grants that we could start to apply for, including the CPA or CPC and some of the MBLC stuff, because we now fulfill the requirements that MBLC is looking for in order to be able to apply for some of these grants, um, which is we have our long range plan and we have state, we um, are have state aid, we, we are, um, yeah, we receive state aid. So we fulfill um, what they need in order for us to apply. And I guess I'm wondering where you, what you're all thinking, um, if this would be a good idea for us to get started on that kind of work. If I could recall correctly, I think Chris explained mm -hmm. in some past meeting that, um, Many of us were sitting here for a long time thinking that we weren't eligible for grants because the building wasn't a single use mm -hmm. as a library building. But it was explained that those parts of the building that are single use uh, would be eligible for the grants. In other words, the, the main floor, I guess. Um, we should focus on the main floor upgrade eligible for the grants and those areas outside of the main floor, we could use like the foundation or the windows or something, we could use CPA grants. And in those areas that are special, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what they are, like up on the second floor or something that needs to be, to be done, uh, we could get our own funding, our own raise our funds, use the race funds. Mm -hmm. So I think we ought to have categories of grants. If that's if I'm interpreting what you said in the past correctly, Chris. That is my understanding, Tom. That uh, we can get grant funding to improve the library proper. Um, it just wouldn't affect anything beyond that. Um, so if we were trying to do something ADA compliant. And like put in an elevator, uh, it could only go up to the library proper. It couldn't go up to the third floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, weatherization, windows, uh, yeah. air infiltration, heating system, these kind of things could be uh, done for that floor. Would you think, would you agree that falls under environmental conditions and controls? Is that? Or building issues? Yeah, for I would the, call it building. Building? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Or M MPLC grant. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think, um, like, you know, I, I like to say, let's table this to the next meeting, but we don't really have the time to table it to the next meeting um, because of the holidays and everything and the deadline of J January 14th. Um, I think this might be a good place to talk about having a grant committee, and, you know, and having just a group of two or three, um, along with Chris, um, sit down and kind of talk about how this should go and and move forward from there. Um, what do you think? A committee, a grant committee? I, I would. I, I've worked with the CPA before. Mm -hmm. And I'd be glad I'd be if, if we could come to a meeting of the minds as to what we would ask the CPA right. for, yeah. I'd be glad to fill out that form and distribute it to everybody without 
uh, without polling their opinion of it. Mm -hmm. And in our January meeting, if we could schedule it before the CPA submittal date, mm -hmm. we could slide that one in. Okay. So our January meeting is... Their meeting is the 11th, right? Yes. Or I should say their submittal to the town, or our submittal to the town clerk has to be by January 11th. Yeah, and then their meeting is, I think, is it is it also the 14th um, calendar? I can't find the calendar, here it is. Okay, we, so, go ahead. If we can't pull together a full-blown meeting, we could pull together a quorum and just vote the form and uh, push it to the next step. Okay. So our next meeting would be January 7th. That's the oh. first Thursday. That's just a couple of days, Tom. January 7th? Yeah. A month. Yeah, it's a so, month for us from now, but but yeah. to hand in by the 11th is that yeah. what i'm understanding so we mm -hmm. have the seventh and the following monday is when it would have to be handed in the meeting would be for that following thursday the 14th does yeah, that feel the, like enough time tom sure I'll, I'll get the form filled out and every, it will be in everyone's hand on Jan, before january 7th mm -hmm. and then we come to the meeting we modify it approve it i'll revise it according to the uh instructions of the of the vote and pass it on to the clerk so let's say so go ahead maybe, maybe if i am connecting the dots is tom working with chris and perhaps a member or two else of our trustees yeah. let's form that subcommittee like uh tom and i did for the scholarship and then we'll be all prepared for the seventh yeah okay perfect so then if you're if we use Tom's idea, which is a discussion we should have, this is just an example of the window cells and the bottom parts of the windows on the, near the road getting taken care of, we would need an estimate. Is, is it possible, do you think, for us to get an estimate that it seems pretty quick during the holidays um, to get any estimates? I think well, it's worth there's, trying. Okay. There's written estimates and there's guesstimates. And, okay. and with the CPA, if you don't use all the money, you just give it back. Okay. Okay, so so what project would we like to apply for some money um, from this community preservation grant? Is that the way we would like to go? The window sills and the windows that Tom was talking about? I think that's a good starting point. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Krista? Yes, that's fine. I, I'm still confused. We're only talking about this local grant right now. We're not that's talking right. about, the, okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. It, it's the, I think it's the most immediate in terms mm -hmm. of the schedule. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So the application would be for the window repair and, and the gaps. So it's only the windows in the front of the building, right? Is that what we're talking about? Well, well, we'll see what, if they're $10 a piece, we'll go all the way around. If they're okay. $10,000 a piece, we'll do one. Okay. So an evaluation of all the windows. Mm -hmm. I and, have then, a... and then the, um, the gaps in the walls, or I'm sorry. So um, or the lighting, you we're not talking about that right now. Just the, just the windows. The window oh, sills. Yeah, the Question window about sills. the, does anybody remember um, when Ryan was talking about the green um, grant, did that cover lighting for the children's room? I, I thought it had to do with the exit signs and lighting, but I didn't know if it was children's room and I didn't know if it would be like doubling up. I, I don't think, think so. Yes, I think it was just code compliant uh, like the exit Actually, signs. That's what I remember, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, let's see. I can give Ryan a quick. Chris, do you have it there somewhere though? Uh, I have a spreadsheet that he had sent. Um, and it has uh, 
interior lighting for the library, uh, it looks like uh, 5,000, 5,300. Oh, that's the annual savings per kilowatt, sorry. Installed cost would be $10,250, but it doesn't specify what what they're uh, referring to as far as the interior lighting. Well, recognize that exit signs and stuff aren't gonna save you any energy. It must be uh, illumination for reading and seeing. Yep. So, um, How was that going to be funded through the green through the green? Because it was energy green saved? grant. Yes. Have we ever heard back on the status of that? I don't re recall it. Um, let me check where I'm at. Let me, uh, I'm currently remoting. To my computer at work. It's time off. CPC. Um, I received an email from Ryan, and it's just keeping you in the loop on our Green Communities grant effort to make some of our buildings more energy efficient. And in this first round of projects, they are looking to upgrade some light, weatherize, and add an air reset controller to the school. So it looks like they're focusing on the school right now, um, but they do have part of the green grant being uh, directed towards the library at a future date. And that's all that's all he's got he'll continue to update us i'm sorry well, it was lighting and what was the other thing you said that might be covered uh weatherization thank you so i don't know that that weatherization would cover like interior walls that we were talking about yeah i'm not even sure that they uh they noticed the the issues with the interior walls is the like a. Uh, I don't know, anywhere from a one to two inch gap in the back corner close to the Slade building in the adult library where you can see there's a just a black area and when the wind blows, you can feel it coming in. I, I think I fell down on this one. I, I was gonna talk to the uh, people over at Monty Tech. Oh yeah. And uh, I never did folks, sorry. Um, Let me try. Okay. I don't know if they're still doing projects. You know, people don't want other people in their houses. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what they're doing. Sounds like I ought to call Ryan and catch myself up. <laughs> but the CPA CPA folks are always great. And um, they've always viewed the municipal building as a priority. And they've been very good to us. So yeah. I, I think we can uh, put a placeholder in, so to speak, and uh, not identify how many windows, but uh, pick a number and be reasonable with them and they'll be reasonable <laughs> for us. Okay, so who would like to um, work with Tom on that? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not great with grants. If there's any way I can help, I'm happy to help. I'm, I'm happy to help too, but I don't know anything about this. Um, you know, it's all new to me. I might be better working on the other grant if we wanted to try to pursue that. Okay. okay. I have I, a I, I'm available. I have a recommendation. The, the CPA grant form is only two pages, if I recall correctly. Mm. And, and it's pretty basic. Uh, 
let me try to get a carpentry type guy to give me a feel for what it's going to take. And I'll submit the draft completed form to everybody and everybody can get a poke at it. And uh, I'm probably going to lean on you the heaviest, Chris. Hi, Chris. Did you catch that? <laughs> I did catch that. And, and you're in luck because last semester I took a grant writing course. So mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. Isn't that nice? Tom, I don't mind joining and coming in and sitting down if you want to do anything like that or whatever, doing it through Zoom and sitting down and talking any of it through. Well, the only caution is when I distribute it to everybody, we can't have a reply all conversation about it. We just mm -hmm. have to read it and hold our comments until we meet on the 7th. Yeah, okay. Well, what about um, finding someone to come in and look at the windows and give us an estimate? Do you want any help with that? Well, um, I can get a contractor or I can lean on the building inspector. Oh. And uh, he'll, he'll I think, help us or either find a, help us find a contractor or actually give us an estimate himself. Okay. Okay, so we have a start. Tom, reach out if anything comes up and you want any assistance or you just want to talk about something. No problem. Okay. Um, okay, and so, the, um, Krista, I don't know if you've noticed, um, or if, if any of you have noticed, um, the Library Services Technology Act, they have, I, this is what I wanted to share with you, let me see if I can share with you, hold on, I don't know, um, but anyway, they have a whole lot of grants to apply for right now, the tonight is the letter of intent is due, but the letter of intent isn't too intense. Um, but they have a whole bunch of grants. The ones I pulled up are, there's one for um, access for all. Um, so it's a library accessibility. So, um, so how assistance or devices um, for people with disabilities or um, something they're calling a memory cafe or dementia friendly services for the growing population of memory loss, people with memory loss. But they have this whole series of grants that we could apply for. And now that I'm sitting here talking to you um, and the letter of intent is due tonight, probably by midnight, um, I think I'm gonna table this one and just pay attention to it. And when it comes up again, we'll look at it. Um, and so- Would it be useful to take a look at all these grant opportunities and create a calendar? So that we get it on our radar as to when things are going to happen, so I mean, that so, we're not caught like oh, it's, it's yes, night. Um, yes, um, I'm happy to help with something like that. Okay, I mean, like I, I'm, I hate to say this, but that is not a thing. Yes, I would love to see that, and that is not a thing I wish to do because it's so time consuming. Um, so if you want to take that on, Connie, and get all the deadlines deadlines down, it'd be so helpful to know in advance when MBLC deadlines are coming up. Or you can sign up or subscribe for MBLC grant notifications. I've never gotten one of those, but I don't know. I made a mistake when I was signing up. Um, but there are notifications. So if you, anyone wants to take that on, Connie, if you want to go go about creating a spreadsheet like that, that would be awesome. If I could ask, uh, Joe, what, who, what entity provided you the information about this latest? An email. It was an email. From? From, um, let me look, it was uh, MBLC. The, the thing is for me, it took me a long time to actually get to an email and read it. Um, so it was an MBLC. I guess, I guess it's likely that MBLC has a calendar of such a thing. Yeah. But, yeah. Yes. You know, I, but the I thing is, it requires, it's uh, Robert Favini. Um, so yeah, that's his name, Robert Favini, um, LSTA Direct Grant. Um, yes, um, I'm sure they do, but it's, the, the thing is, I think it requires someone dedicated to checking that regularly. Well, um, might we try to form the grant subcommittee? 
You, in the past, you said it could only be two people. Is that, if it's an official subcommittee, could it be? Well, three is, a, is three a quorum or is four a quorum? No, four is a quorum. Well, you don't want a quorum. Right. And you, two people can communicate, I mean, without getting into this whole um, deliberative body thing. Mm -hmm. I, re I recommend two. Two. I recommend two also, just so that one person isn't taking, do you know, have it all on their shoulders and having to report back. And then I know how guilty I feel when I'm coming to you with a deadline of December 3rd and it's today. So if a couple well, of people- I'm, I'm, I'm fine with investigating these things, but the problem with grants is that we have to be able to do, you know, a lot of the programming grants you know, I mean, Chris can only do so much and other mm -hmm. people can help, but it's, yeah. we have to, I think we have to be selective about these things so that we're not, yeah. you know, getting money to do things that we can't actually do. I mean, I'm really interested in the construction grants, mm -hmm. um, you know, for future mm -hmm. as, you know, proof to the town that we are working on, you know, making the library accessible improving the library, not always going back for town funding or town money or even CPC or CPA stuff, um, but that we're applying for MBLC grants or other grants, preservation grants when they're out there. I recognize that for instance, the CPA thing we're doing, the money wouldn't be available to us until after the town meeting vote and everything. So it's yeah. really July, 2021. That Yep. that it gets into our hands. Yeah. That's okay. That gives us time. <laughs> I think I'd do, I think it would be useful to figure out like LSTA grants, like when does CPA do, when's Mass Historical Society do, like mm -hmm. when is like mm -hmm. other IMLS grants do, like mm -hmm. just kind of having a list and then we can selectively decide. We don't have to apply for every grant. Right. But, but selectively yeah. decide what's appropriate to apply Absolutely. for at a given time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so to know that what's out there and when would be a great idea and it would help us to narrow down how what we would choose and how what we want to do. So I think that's a great idea. So why don't we just start with that making a, a list. I'm sorry, I talk all day on this platform and my throat is so dry right now. Um, yeah, so I think let's kind of if you're comfortable with it start that way making the list of what's out there and when the deadlines are. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm happy. I'm happy to start that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Any other com concerns, comments? Are we are we forming a subcommittee, or we're just starting with that, and then we'll? I mean, I think start with what do you think? What do you all think? I think I think start with that, and once we narrow it down, form a committee. What's on your minds? Connie's the committee. Connie's, and Connie, <laughs> reach out again. I I will be there. I'm happy to create the list and then I think we'll need a committee if we're actually going to yes. apply for yes. grants. Like yeah. I think creating the list is not going to be a, that list. big of a deal, but like if mm -hmm. we're actually applying, then yes. there needs to be more hands on yes. deck for that. So. Yes. Yeah. So you're just creating the list and the de with the deadlines. That's, that's a good starting place. We haven't had that. So. It wouldn't be impossible to have two people for this type of grant and two mm -hmm. different people for another type of grant. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm on board for the MBLC grant. I would love to work on that. Okay, so we, when we gather again in January, we'll talk about CPC. We'll, Connie, you take your time, you know, if it's done by that point, we'll take a look at it. We'll make decisions. Um, I will also reach out to um, Ryan about that green grant stuff so we really understand it better. I'm feeling like I, I might've understood it that night, but I don't. Um, know what the library's part of it is right now. So we'll talk more about that in January if, if we can. One other Do you comment. Want me to forward? You first, Tom. Chris, isn't, isn't the boiler repair part of our regular annual budget? Uh, we have a certain amount set aside for services. Um, 
So having it cleaned and having it repaired does, does come out of that budget. Uh, honestly, the, the boiler works fine. I, it's, it's the heating part, you know, the pipes and the steam and the radiators. That's, the, that's what I think is the issue. But my point is, I'm not sure. do we need a grant for that or is it already part of our budget? Oh, uh, I, we may need a grant for that because I'm not, I'm really not sure how they would even go about trying to fix the heat itself uh, in the library. Because I think we have one, two, three, we got three radiators, uh, one in the foyer, one in the children's room and one in the adult room. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the heat. Right. Well, and maybe there could be some town involvement in that, right? Because that's the building is used by uh, the downstairs heat is fine. They oh. have no problems with with heat down there. Mm -hmm. But it's all one unit, right? That one unit takes care of all the floors. I don't know how many phases there are in the boiler. Mm -hmm. um, there may be a phase for the for the basement, and maybe a separate phase for the library, and maybe even a third phase for the third floor. Um, I don't even know if heat makes it up to the third floor or not. Um, side note, Jonathan was just speaking with Ryan this week with regards to mini splits, which Ryan had indicated are in the first floor basement of the library, which may be providing heat. Is that true? I didn't mini know of any. Mini what? Did you say mini splits? Yeah, mini, mini splits. So, I have no idea what they are. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, that might be another supplemental heat source for the basement. He said that they okay. installed it over at the Slade building, as well as like the town offices over in the basement of the um, the library. Oh, is, so is, a mini, is a mini split one of those things that mounts in the wall? Yeah. And there's a unit outside? Yeah. Okay, I, I think that's a dream plan. I don't believe there's any existing in the library. Um, I don't know what they are, so I, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure if we could use them upstairs or not. I don't know if that would uh, cause a problem with the preservation committee, uh, the state, uh, the we're registered as a historical building. And if there was any structural and changes in there, that might be an issue. Uh, so un until I go in and take a look at what they are, I, I can't say yay or nay. I can't okay. make a comment. I'm sorry. All right, that sounds like it needs a little more research. Whatever they are, if you walk by them, they would appear new. Uh -huh. uh, and we don't have any new stuff. Okay. Well, I was down in the library offices or in the in the basement and it was warm down there. I was visiting Lori Reed. It was warm. I was surprised at how warm it was. Something well, if it, we had a nice warm day uh, and that can affect the heat up in the library. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as it gets cold, it starts getting down around 60 and 58. That's chilly. Just spit gum out on Zoom in a video recording. Okay, so um, I don't know if if there is anything anyone wanted to bring up to add to, to the agenda. I have the 150th anniversary talk. I don't know if anyone has anything that they want to bring up as a planning activity for that well, time. I've been gathering some information and uh, Johanna and I looked at, you know, the old minutes and things to just see what's been done. So um, I don't think we have to talk about it tonight, but, mm -hmm. you know, we have been working on gathering that you know, maybe we can okay. that in January or something. Okay, so I'll leave that on the list for January. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But, and as far as subcommittees, that's another subcommittee is like community outreach and public events. Great idea. Yeah. It sounds like we have a subcommittee of Johanna and Krista. Well, I mean, I'm I was fine with look, you know, gathering that information, but 
I don't have to be the planning committee. <laughs> I and mean, so, um, yeah, so when get, we'll talk about it in January and we'll figure out who is on the subcommittee. Sure. I mean, I'm happy to do what I can, but I, I don't mean that just because I did that part, I okay. have to do the other part. Okay. okay. Uh, so consider subcommittee for planning for the event. Yes. Okay. 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 So I would like to table the ADA compliance discussion unless someone has something really that they want to bring up tonight. Are you tabling mm -hmm. with me? Okay. Anyone have anything that they want to bring up? Okay, so go ahead. Me? Krista? Krista? Okay. okay. It was just um, in the last minutes, I only know because I typed them up, we said mm -hmm. we were going to um, uh, talk about which goals in the plan that we wanted to, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of focus on. I mean, it's kind of related to the subcommittee. I'm not saying we have to do yeah. it tonight, but. I intentionally I remove that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think um, that people, I, you know, what Morgan was saying, I think last time around was we kind of know and have our strengths and we can gather that when we need it. Um, I know I didn't say it exactly like Morgan did, but um, yeah. So is that okay with everyone to just kind of leave that? We know what our strengths are. When something comes up, we step up to the plate and take on the committee role or subcommittee role. Okay, I'm just wondering if there needs to be something in here, a follow up to that, just that so we decided not to do that or. Um, or maybe I, you know what, I'll, I'll um, maybe if you just put a little blurb in there and then I can, I'll go in and write something in there. I don't know what that will be yet though. In the interest of focusing on higher priorities, mm -hmm. we're going to table that for future. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah, I think that's. Um, yeah, so does anyone have anything that they would like added to the next agenda or the uh, one after that? If or when something comes up, please just let me know and I'll add it to the agenda. Okay. Um, so for next time around, what we really have is grant stuff. Um, we have um, the 150th anniversary stuff. Um, we have, um, we'll catch up on the green, um, what is it, green communities grant and the CPC stuff. I have a, a general question. Yes. I, I try to keep, in general, I try to keep Josephine informed, like, uh, when this inspector, the foundation inspector guy is gonna show up Monday morning at 10 o'clock, you know, I keep Josephine informed of those things, but I may be giving the email to either the person on this committee who gets the most emails of anybody. <laughs> or should, should I, if it's, if it's everyone's preference, I can copy everyone, mm -hmm. no problem. And we can all stay in step and it might make subsequent meetings a little easier. Yeah. Um, is that is that the preference of the committee? If it is, I'm just going to start doing that. I love that idea. Okay, I, I second um, it. it uh, I might not be fully uh, aware of it, but I have a second window, so I was trying to search for it, um, like past info. So if it's sent to me, I should put it in my library folder and then can reference back if needed. Okay. Okay, then I'll start copying everybody as long as we don't start a uh, uh, hailstorm of emails. Yeah, no discussion, table discussions. And then just no reply all, no replies. Yeah. 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 Okay, then that's what I'll do from now on. Yeah, because Tom, I really appreciate that because I have a hard time keeping track of all the emails on, I do. I hate when I say honestly, because people don't like honestly, but it's true. I, I can't keep track of the emails and forwarding and all that. So I would appreciate it if, yeah, if it was an email meant okay. for everyone, it's just- I'll do it. Everyone, no, no, no discussions. Yeah. It won't be blind copies. Everybody will see who's getting more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Did we miss anything tonight? I have a side question and possibly an interest just because it uh, spurred conversation out of the library trustee is going back to mention of the story walk. And I had sent some information to Chris. So if there's a story walk interest, et cetera, 
um, of putting those posts at some point. Okay. So and that's that, for the next meeting to talk about it? I don't think next necessarily, but if and when the time comes, mm -hmm. um, I would say going to one of my interests of um, early literacy, the EEAC is Early Education Advisory Council I'm part of mm -hmm. in collaboration with MOC. I know that one of their grant and funding from the state is to actually get into the Hubbardston community and to promote early literacy. That's their top goal, but then they also do STEM activities and things like that mm -hmm. um, for the preschool through kindergarten. I would even say before preschool, birth through five. Um, and certainly for older siblings is if Hubbardston Library is able to connect with those agencies, I think it would benefit our community as well as our patrons. Okay, so you let me know when you want that to add it to the, to the agenda, and I will, um, I'll do that and then we'll come back to it. Yeah, if and when it comes back up and if it's something that Chris wants to proceed with, mm -hmm. um, if there's a way we can connect, that'd be great. Okay. All right, anything else? We've done pretty well, it's only 807. Did Tom, do you need assistance? Was there somebody working with you? And if you need help, I'm happy. I just don't know what. So if you point me and say, I need help with this, I'm happy to do it. I won't be shy, but I have to compliment Ryan. He, uh, he pulled together the highway department and he's found this contractor. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I'm just kind of being towed along by him. He's, he's doing a great job. If you see him, compliment him. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anything else? Hey, I wish everyone a happy holidays. We won't see each other until that's all done. Or maybe we'll see each other at the library. So happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Yeah. Stay safe. Merry Christmas. Everybody. You too. Yeah. Merry happy Christmas. Holidays. Happy holidays. Um, Take care. Yeah. So let's make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Um, so motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. Motion to adjourn. Oh. Morgan, second. I second. Krista? Yes. Tom? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Connie? Yes. Josephine Amato? Yes. All right.